Hey everybody, welcome back to Amo City. In this episode we're working on the downtown of the city and also some canals around it that also form the borders of the artificial islands that will make up the city in the future and do a bunch more detailing around the area, specifically with the new prop snapping mod which I think is going to be quite a game changer. It actually allows you to snap props to buildings and do all kinds of stuff with that. So let's get started. Now one of the first few things that I wanted to do in this episode is get in all of the buildings in the downtown that will really shape the way that it will look. Uh, now what I wanted to do with this downtown is actually give it a bit, like slightly, that uh, American sort of look to it. Uh, so really have one central tower which uh, is the most unique and the tallest out of the bunch and have some slightly uh, lower towers around it that build up towards the central tallest tower but I actually wanted to have a bit of a twist to it as well since I didn't want to make it a strictly American style downtown and I also wanted to keep the downtown quite small actually I wanted to disperse and scatter the high rises in the city a little bit more instead of concentrating them in one place so while this is the place where the tallest building of the city is I will have a bunch of different clusters around the city kind of in a sense uh, similar to how Rotterdam has certain zones, for instance, where there isn't really one place where the entire skyline is built, but rather you've got a couple of small clusters of high-rise that are sort of really planned to fit together instead of one very large building up uh, cluster. Um, so that's what I'm kind of going for. There are just a couple of high-rise buildings and the rest is just going to be some mid-rise building that builds up around it in a kind of symmetrical way to build this very central plaza which is probably the most important part of the downtown right in the middle of all these skyscrapers and we're gonna have a canal around that in the future as well. I just wanted to make sure that everything sort of comes together around the downtown so we have the most important uh, road going on the side here. We also have the central station and we're gonna have the canal as well and hopefully that's all gonna fit together with the buildings of the downtown not too uh, tightly squished in between all that. Uh, so after I kind of sorted out the rails for a little bit there, I actually had the rail in the middle of the road for quite a while, but in the end I decided it might just look a little bit better if I have the rail on the side of it. It's also a little bit easier with the station and I don't really have to worry about making this city as compact as I can. I just wanted to keep it quite dense, which is why I originally thought I could have the rail over the middle of the road, but it ended up just looking a bit too claustrophobic and dense. Um, so now it's on the side and we can add a bunch of very small parks and planters around the rail. So that's pretty nice as well. It's going to look pretty good hopefully by the end of this episode. Um, and I'm already starting to kind of get into that at this point. Just like the first part of the city has a lot of these ground decals to give color to the ground and put a lot of foliage into it, I also wanted to make sure that every uh, space, especially alongside these very main roads, uh, would be decorated quite well with a lot of foliage. I especially figured that here since this is a very important and busy road for traffic as well as for uh, the trains. So I wanted to keep the buildings further apart from the road here, which is why there's this very wide sidewalk with these planters in the middle. Um, which should hopefully cancel out the noise pollution a little bit and make this at least a slightly nicer place to live than right next to a very busy road and kind of be this green buffer between the road and the buildings if you will. And it just looks nice. I'm quite happy actually with how this turned out. I didn't want to put grass down there just because it's underneath the railroad there's no way that you could keep up grass. But there were also some other concerns in a few comments that I got last uh, video about maybe placing too much foliage in the city because in the end this is a desert city and much of the foliage that you'd be placing over here um, you know would probably have to come from desalinating water because you're in a desert and there's barely any rainfall and no rivers in Bahrain. Um, well I'm not too concerned about that I don't have too much foliage in this city and I want to uh, keep it quite low on the amount of uh, grass that I have on the surface but then again, I do want to fill it with as much foliage as I can. Uh, I kind of feel like it's just about okay to do that because I planned the city to be on the west coast of Bahrain, which is actually somewhat green. It's not that green, but there is actually... Um, <laughs> I found this on Wikipedia. It's not too much like background research, but there's actually an aquifer 
underneath Bahrain, uh, which is slightly salty, but it's still usable and um, which is actually takes a lot of natural water from. Um, so while there aren't any rivers, there is actually some ground water that has been used for centuries for irrigation and for any kind of farming, especially on the west coast of Bahrain, which is pretty interesting. It's not at all a 100% sandy desert. And um, I feel like it's somewhat okay to add a lot of foliage around here. And mostly it just makes the livability of the city a lot better as well. Um, so really, wherever I can, wherever there are these very wide open boulevards or plazas, I want to add a lot of foliage. Same goes for the plaza over here, uh, where I am totally kind of behind here. I w this is basically the plaza that I was talking about earlier on, which is really the central plaza of the downtown here. Now this is strictly speaking the downtown when it comes to the high rise, but it's not really the, the part of the city that I planned to be like the, the re recreational center of life in the city. That is definitely on the other side of the train track and closer to the water. This is more like the business center, really the central business di district of the city. Um, so it's not really as cozy, not as many different shops, but more high rises and offices and that kind of stuff. Though it is still quite mixed, I didn't want to separate it too much and create a downtown which is completely dead. So there will be a couple of uh, facades with shops around there and there's definitely some residential towers in there as well. But it's probably the most businessy part of the entire city. Uh, now with all of the ground decals and the foliage detailing uh, done, which I'm actually really happy with how the little fountain with the uh, the path decorations turn out. I kind of was hoping to be able to do a little bit more with the decorations of paths. When it comes to patterns on um, paths with bricks and colors and that kind of stuff, it's quite simple and it's not really one of the first things that you think about in a city, but I'm actually a complete sucker for good pavements and I think actually they contribute quite a lot to a city being a nice city to live in. Um, and I just wanted to get as many colorful pavements uh, instead of just empty uh, concrete everywhere in the city where I could. And if you can get some sweet patterns into that, that's just extra cool, I suppose. Um, but what I'm doing here might look kind of strange with exactly measuring out all of the distances between these different paths. But what I, what I wanted to do here is start work on the first canal. And it's not really a canal since it's just kind of going to be the divider between the different artificial islands of the city. Uh, more about that in a minute. Um, but I wanted to have this right here as a kind of way to mark off the central zone of the city and sort of be the border between the central island and the more outer islands of the city. Um, so yeah, these will all be artificial islands. What you're seeing right now outside the desert is, uh, or outside the city, is all desert and pretty much just empty sand and the reason that it's just completely empty is that it'll be sea at some point in the future. I just didn't want to have to mess around with making the artificial islands, I just feel that, that it's easier to already have the sand out there and once the actual shape of the city is done, start carving away the sand and let the sea retreat and let the islands really form instead of having the sea and trying to make islands out of that. From a gameplay perspective, I just think the latter would have been a little bit harder. Um, but yeah, just imagine that a lot of the sandy uh, plain that you see outside the city right now, which by the way is a way too light uh, texture of sand. Strict Toaster left me a comment about this actually and uh, recommended to look into it. I have been trying to, for a few hours, get some very good textures of sand, but so far either they were too dark or too light and I'm still kind of messing with that a little bit, but we'll see different sand in the future that's a little bit more greyish and a little bit darker because this is very bright. But anyway, these will all be islands in the future. That's really the most important part about it. I'm not sure if I'm gonna make it a very like interesting shape like the Palm Islands in Dubai, just because it's that kind of thing is a very uh, like top-down kind of way to make a city and I'm not really a big fan of that, like, if you're in the city itself, you don't really see the city being in the shape of a palm tree. It's just kind of interesting from a satellite view. And I'm not really sure if I'm gonna really make the shape very interesting for the city, but it'll, it'll be something, at least. 
It's not going to be a random square. I definitely want to do something with it. The current idea that I have actually is to give the city the, the shape of a desert flower. But that's very far in the future when the entire shape is all done. Anyway, one of the reasons that I also wanted to get this canal here is that having a waterfront in the middle of the city is just a great way to make it a bit nicer to be around, kind of like the canals in Amsterdam or Venice. I wanted to have something over here so that the downtown opens up a little bit, that you have more of an opportunity to see the skyscrapers around there and actually have some nice places where you can sit and eat and have a nice view over a bit of water. Just basically make the city look a bit more livable than uh, without any canals between it. Having interaction with the water is pretty important for me and this seemed like a very good place to have the first canal. Uh, so I was struggling a little bit with these uh, keys every now and then. I was figuring for quite a while instead of keys I could actually use some of the, the walls that are in the workshop that you can just place. Uh, but I figured, no, I can just use the keys and put props on top of that and make my own planters and that way not have to worry about any pre-given details on workshop items and be able to fully customize it and put some awesome palm trees on these keys. So that's uh, what I'm going for in the end, which will be a little bit more work and especially a struggle every now and then with the keys, but with the move it tool it's actually really easy to get these keys and get the exact height that you need to work out the bridges as well and the move it tool has been one of the biggest game changes lately and I'm a really big fan of it. Um, and I'm just finishing the uh, busway at this point very quickly. I don't want to have this part of the city become very um, dense with cars since this side of the plaza too is mostly focused on pedestrians and being this area where you can mostly walk around. But I didn't want to have the bus lane in the middle there, since this is kind of a dead corner when it comes to the light rail system, and it seems like a good place to have the bus. Uh, now we're getting into roadworks for a little bit, uh, struggling with some of these roads, because I wanted to have a connection to the roundabout that actually looks good and would actually be uh, quite functional, but the transition from the uh, avenue to the two separate roads was kind of a struggle every now and then. But I figured it out in the end, and the reason that I wanted to make this roundabout in the first place, that sounded very Canadian, I have no idea where that came from, but the reason why I wanted to make this roundabout in the first place is that this is going to be quite an important connection. Right now the connection from the city into the rest of the world and the other way around is on the other side, on that very small roundabout, but I actually hope to get a highway connection into this roundabout right here, because this is also the side of the city where the airport is going to be, and so this roundabout is really going to be the, the entry into the city. Uh, hence why it's quite a big roundabout and connects to some of the biggest avenues on the side here. And why it's quite an important thing that I wanted to get in just around the corner of the downtown section here and started working on that for a little bit. Also this is where the canal is gonna turn back around the other side because the very basic makeup of this city is that we have the one large island in the middle which is the current downtown island and then around five sides we have five large different islands and there will be smaller islands around that as well in all kinds of different shapes but that's the very basic premise. It is really like a desert flower. We have the center and five parts around that. Uh, you could say it's maybe the five pillars of Islam or <laughs> whatever, but that's not really the idea. It's just, it just looks good. That's why I figured after a couple of tries of figuring out how I wanted to lay out stuff. So that's where we're going in the future and that's also why I am making these canals right now. Now much of the work regarding the planning is done at this point, so it's time to move into a little bit more detailing. And first off, I wanted to do the buildings over here because they're kind of the gateway into the downtown. We have the two towers with a bunch of apartment blocks and um, also some shops on the side there. They're technically uh, offices, but I'm going to make those into shops, but that's going to come in a little bit. But uh, basically, they're, they're kind of the entry into the downtown. On the other side of the avenue there, it's just going to connect to another part of the city and um, 
to more suburb-ish, but really not suburbs part of the city, just not as dense as the downtown. Um, so that's really, yeah, kind of the gateway into the center of the city here. And a nice little waterfront, which is very Amsterdam-ish. Uh, it's a little bit actually as well like Diyar al Muharak, which is this project that Bahrain actually has of artificial islands where they're making a new part of a large city. Which actually I found very interesting, it's not necessarily a sustainable city, but I actually found it very interesting how they're actually looking into social dimensions as well for the city, but mostly it's one that has a lot of interaction with water and a lot of these areas with waterfronts and that kind of stuff. And um, Bahrain at this point has more artificial islands than real islands, so it just, it kind of just fits into the country, I suppose. I'm no expert on the country, but I just figured it would be a good way to uh, experiment with the planned city for a little bit. Also, very quick note, now that I'm looking at these bus lanes at this point, the entire traffic system is something that aesthetically I'll probably want to look into in the future because yeah, there are a couple of problems that a lot of people commented about and that I do recognize. One of them being the fact that the bus lanes are red and have black crossings. I wish they didn't do this, but yeah, there's just no way to do anything about that. Um, and the shade of red is a little bit questionable at best either uh, as well. The thing is just... I wanted to use bus routes because I figured that would keep most of the cars out of the, the busways. But little did I know that the sims in the game don't give a fuck and they're still using them anyway. And now there's cars going over my basketball courts and there's cars going over all of the concrete and going over every place where I didn't even want to have cars. And um, that's kind of a problem. And I might look into that with traffic manager. So yeah, when it comes to the bus lanes, I might stop cars from going there, I might change it into regular roads and uh, stop cars from going there but leave the buses on it and when it comes to the concrete paths I'll see where I can sort out the cars and fix that stuff. I'm just not really gonna do that yet since I want the entire area to be finished before I go and tweak the gameplay related things. First kinda wanna get the aesthetics uh, part of the story done. Also one thing to note about this is that the population, as you can tell, is like 20,000, which is which is pretty good, but it's not really realistic. I actually, since I imported most of these buildings into Rico myself, and for a lot of these skyscrapers, I counted a couple hundred inhabitants, which is actually fairly reasonable. But for some of the mid-rise buildings, I counted a couple hundred as well, and I should not have done that. The population is off the charts and should definitely be a bit lower. So the entire amount of people driving around in cars is disproportionate to the size of the city at this point as well. I think it would be a bit lower. Uh, oh, it's actually going down in game now. Not sure what's happening there. There are a couple of death waves every now and then. But um, yeah, I'm probably going to look at that as well because much of this, even though this is already a pretty sizable city, much of this is also going to be for like tourists realistically or offices or commercial purposes. So... I'm not sure how realistic the number 20,000 really is at this point. Anyway, back to how everything is shaping up over here because I wanted to get back into the small buildings which I built on the gateway just now. I think that's one of the best things that the prop snapping mod can actually achieve. The fact that you can snap advertisements and billboards to buildings means that you can kind of assign a certain meaning to a building. For instance, I wanted to use those office blocks because I really like the way that they look. I just like the original model of the game, but they're office blocks and they don't have any kind of text on them and nothing that would make them inviting. Like put them in a city and it's just a dead block with like no good opening. It's not very open. It's a very uh, like closed in on itself kind of building. And I think using these, a lot of these billboards and uh, these name signs, you can actually make a building look like something that it's not originally, so you can take the signs of a restaurant and the billboards of a restaurant, slap them onto a building and make it look a lot more alive, make it look a lot more like it's part of an active part of a city where you can hang out and go into restaurants and bars and that kind of stuff. Um, and I just like that because many of these buildings don't have that and that lack of names and billboards 
just makes the city look a little bit more dead. I actually had it on some of the skyscrapers as well. What you see very often in real life skyscrapers, of course, since they're kind of the way of a company to say my deck is bigger than yours, you always have the, the name tag or the logo of a company on the top of the skyscraper, which you don't really have in the game. But there's usually this place on a building where you can still put a logo. So what I actually think is very fun is to just add these different in-game logo boards to slap them on the top of skyscrapers to kind of make them look as if they're really part of this one company, be it the, uh, the fictional uh, newspaper of City Skylines or some kind of other company. It's just a little very small extra touch of realism that I like way too much for the reason that it's, it's just a little bit more immersive than have all of these buildings be completely signless and pretty dead looking. It's also a pretty cool way to make a kind of, um, what, what's it called again? A uh, Times Square kind of idea, or Piccadilly Circus. Though I don't want to mess around too much with that kind of idea. It's, you can really make places come alive and be a lot more interesting by using all of these billboards and names. Yeah, anyway, back to topic. I am way behind the video all the time. The last thing that I wanted to do here is add the scenery around the houses here and make this large boulevard come to life. You can really see like how wide the sidewalks over here are since I wanted the buildings to be quite far away from the buildings. Um, but hopefully with some of these uh, open spaces with a lot of green space and some of the sidewalks and uh, detailing around here, that's, that's kind of like abridged very large distance between the buildings and I'm quite happy with how the very large avenue in the middle over here turned out. It doesn't feel too large I feel but it's also not too crammed it's not like the buildings sit right in the middle of the light rail so I'm quite happy with this very important main sort of traffic avenue. And that'll be more or less it for this episode. In the next episode, I'm gonna finish off some of the bits and bobs of the downtown, because while the downtown itself is definitely finished at this point, um, I've only really finished one side of the canal here, and I definitely need to finish the other side of the canal as well. I don't really have a place where the taxis can stand in the central station, and I might even add another place where buses can hook up that can go to the other side of the city or the airport basically turn the other side of the station, which is now still a desert, into a bit of a traffic hub as well, um, without making it too open and too much of a concrete field. I'm not sure how I'm going to do that actually, it's going to take a bit of experimentation, but that's what I hope to do in the next episode, along with some more detailing of course, some old parts of the city are still very undetailed, and of course add all kinds of new things. So yeah, thank you guys for watching, and I hope to see you guys next time.